And when we go into homes that were uh, built in the 80s, 90s, uh, sometimes even in the early 2000s that still have that, that gold hardware, uh, it really does stand out. It does. And if, if we're able to replace that with a brushed nickel, uh, it really modernizes the home in a, in a significant way and uh, makes your home look way different. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hey, my friend, welcome back to the State 48 Homeowner Podcast. And today we're talking about the top four homeowner projects that can bring the most return on investment to your home. And today we're here with Nat Stout. How are you doing, Nat? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, excellent. So we've got a lot of homeowners that are either thinking about listing their home for sale yep. or they're just living in their home and they've got some things that they need to do and they're just wondering, how do I prioritize projects to make sure that if I'm doing them, is it going to bring back value absolutely. down the road when I go to list it? Yep, Absolutely. I think one of the first places that we look and focus on are the gathering spots. What are the biggest gathering spots in the home? And what we see is it's a kitchen, great room area. Oh yeah, you know most definitely. So what are the what are the top things that they're looking at in those spaces? So I think yeah, the number one area to focus uh, your attention is going to be the number one area that people gather, which is that that kitchen slash great room. Right. And I think that that is generally the first place that people go to when they're thinking about uh, making a change in their home. Right. But it's also uh, probably the first place people look when they're going and visiting a new uh, a home for the first time. Yeah. And, they're, and they're they're going out there with their buyer agent and, and they walk in. First place they go is that kitchen. Exactly. And I think when you're looking at that, you have to kind of separate it into uh, – two different categories. Are you going to do major improvements? Like, are you going to yeah. gut your kitchen and and completely redo it? Or are you going to do some minor updating? Mm -hmm. um, and, for, you know, for our purposes right now, if you're going to go the side of uh, minor updates, I think one of the first things is going to be refacing your cabinets. Yes. And, uh, you know, we can go a couple different <clears throat> directions there. We can go hiring the pros. We can go hiring somewhat of a pro <laughs> and we can go with uh, a DIY approach right now I will say we have seen some successful DIY projects yes when we've gone to uh, list homes we've seen some that uh, some homeowners had done a really good job uh, DIY where they've taken the cabinets apart they've refinished them re uh, either painted them or just completely refinished them mm -hmm. um, I can say that that is probably in the minority. I would agree. That most of the time when it's a DIY project, you can generally tell it's a DIY project. I would agree. I think the good rule of thumb is if you if you have experience and you've done it before, mm -hmm. maybe on a previous home or a couple previous homes, um, and, it's, and it's minor in nature, and you're comfortable with it, have at it. But if, it's, if this is the first time you're doing it, um, you may want to consider hiring a professional and not always going with the lowest bidder. Right. Uh, you know, check, check some references, you know, uh, maybe if your friends have had, had it done, maybe go and see who, who did their, uh, project. Right. Uh, don't just go with the lowest bidder because, uh, you know, it might, sometimes you get what you pay for. <laughs> you, you exactly do. Right. Um, the other thing that, uh, we want to maybe reconsider doing DIY unless you're really, really good at it is backsplashes. Yeah. Um, these are two things that you can tell pretty quickly if you had a professional do it or if it's DIY. Correct. Um, it does not take much on a backsplash or any tiling mm -hmm. uh, to be off <laughs> right. just a little bit. Right. And it, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, absolutely. I think one other big thing when it comes to gathering areas is lighting mm -hmm. and having uh, newer fixtures and or kind of uniform lighting. I mean, how many times have you been in a house where you have different shades of white, you know, area to area? Mm -hmm. So you have bright white in the in the kitchen and then oh, right yeah. next door is maybe it, it's a eating kitchen or a breakfast nook and there's a different lighting in that room as yeah. well you definitely want to address that as well yeah and uh and, and just uh finding lighting that uh matches your personality mm -hmm. you know the uh, 
one of the things that when you come in, you may have bought the property new. And if you buy the property new, the, the spots for pendant lights, there's generally not pendant lights sitting there. Right. And if you bought the property resale, those pendant lights may not be your style. Right. So it's just an easy fix to go in and buy new pendant lights that match your, your style. But even lighting uh, under cabinet lighting. Yeah, um, is uh, something that makes things pop, and uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, you can, you can, you don't have to hardwire it into the house. Even you can just use battery uh, under cabinet lighting, and uh, it really makes a huge difference. It does, and that's actually one of those things that, if it's your first time doing it, you'd probably be very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, high success rate yeah. on, <laughs> on DIY uh, under cabinet lighting, and if you're uh, refinishing your heart, your 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 cabinets, mm -hmm. one of the things to look at too is either changing out your hardware, adding hardware where hardware didn't exist, or mm. de-hardwaring. Uh, is that a word? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, this, is, this is a podcast. <laughs> right. We created a new word. Right. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, people don't have hardware. They want yeah. to add it. Sometimes they have dated hardware mm -hmm. and going in and changing out hardware. One of the best places to find hardware is actually eBay. Uh, you can uh, find... Uh, a lot of hardware for inexpensive mm -hmm. on eBay. Yeah. Uh, just go and, and find the, the stuff that you, you really, really like. And we'll talk about hardware a little bit later today, too. Uh, but uh, if you also have hardware on there that you don't like, a lot of cabinets don't need hardware. The way that they're built, they have uh, grips for your, for your fingers. And sometimes that sleek look, a lot of people really enjoy. Right. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that is being consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, with pulls or versus knobs. Um, yes. Can you mix them? Yes, you can, but be consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure that you're leveling those. They're in the same point on every cabinet or every drawer, etc. But, uh, especially if you're adding them where it wasn't there before. Yeah. And one thing to consider, uh, when you're redoing your kitchen, uh, it's always nice if you're, Kitchen cabinet style mirrors your uh, cabinets in the in the bathrooms as well. Correct. Um, you know, it's one of the things that just kind of makes the home cohesive. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to. If you have a, a unique look in your in your bathrooms, that's a little bit different. That's fine. But if they do match, it's it's a nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes the home very cohesive. Exactly. Exactly. Carry that all the way through. As much as you can. Yeah. So where uh, one other thing that we want to look at in mm -hmm. the kitchen is uh, we, we talk about cohesion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about appliances. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it really comes down to uh, the finish of the appliances. Nobody really cares if you have a if you have different. Uh, manufacturers. Yeah, if you have if you have a, a, a GE and a uh, and a Frigidaire and uh, you know people don't care about that. They do care about whether or not they're all um, black or they're all stainless. Stainless, or white. exactly. Now, it, if you really got if you've got that that old uh, green stove <laughs> and a white dishwasher, a black fridge, and a stainless microwave. It's going to stand out a little bit. It will. It will. So, you definitely want to be uniform in that regard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we do have some resources uh, where, we, you know, we can we can find people a pretty good deal on stainless, uh, you know, and, and if you just reach out to us and, and, you know, they don't have to all match. No. Stainless is stainless. It, right. It, <laughs> they'll look fine together. Uh, people are not going with a checklist and making sure that they're they're all in a tag. Exactly. So where else do people gather? I think that, well, they we hit the number one area where people gather. I think the second place is in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And especially if you have a pool, or even if you don't have a pool and you have a nice hardscape backyard, that's generally going to be a gathering place. If you have kids, they're going to be playing outside. Um, so that's an area. I think that's the second place that people go immediately once they're in a home. Yeah, I think one of the misnomers about Arizona is that we're not about outdoor living. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not in, you know, August. <laughs> well, in the middle of the day, but it, yet you'll find a lot of people are enjoying outdoor living Absolutely. even in the evening hours because right. we've got incredible sunsets. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we've got misters. Uh, we've, you know, like you said, a lot of people have pools. 
And uh, it does not take uh, that much to convert our outdoor spaces into outdoor living spaces. So, right. You know, some some furniture out there, so, you know, uh, making some great uh, grilling stations, uh, yeah. you know, covering, uh, creating some shade, uh, bringing in some great landscaping and some lighting uh, to create what, you know, a place that you really, really enjoy that down the road when you go to sell the property, uh, it actually looks more like a resort than just that that gravel backyard right. that you you moved into. Right. And it doesn't take a lot to accomplish that. No. Um, sure, you can spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on your backyard and a lot of people do. But, you know, just by adding strategically adding uh, some landscape um, to any existing hardscape, you know, whether it's trees or bushes or mm -hmm. things like that, adding a fire pit, that's a DIY. I have a handful of friends who have done their own fire pits in the backyard DIY. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that, gathering different distinct gathering spots other than just on the patio. Yeah. And it, this is one of the things that doesn't have to happen all at once. No. You know, uh, a kitchen. Yeah, if you're going to start doing stuff in your kitchen, it's probably going to be something that you probably want to do kind of in the same time frame. Uh, a backyard, um, you could do in stages. You can yeah. do in chunks. I would say it's probably a good idea to develop a plan early on, even if you are going to do things in stages. Develop a plan so that you yeah. have an idea what you're going to do so you're not putting things in and ripping them out later when you things you know come to mind and you, you decide to change it about develop a plan start to start to build it out put it in you know add these things uh, add other things add other things but uh unlike interior stuff that outside you can do in stages absolutely and that applies to all types of homes mm -hmm. so i mean you're if you buy a new build and you're walking mm -hmm. yeah. in you're you're walking into dirt yeah, in, the you sure are. <laughs> in the in the backyard right so have a yeah exactly to your point have a plan for that you can you can do that in stages on resale homes um maybe it ha it doesn't have a few amenities that you would like to have mm -hmm. um make a plan again for that so let's talk about uh the the third thing that we can do and this one is not as crazy. So we, we talk about that kitchen, that that backyard. We're we're spending some money there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we can do that has a super high return on investment, without spending a lot of money, is just hardware. Absolutely. Yeah. Doorknobs, uh, light switches, light uh, cover plates. Yeah. Um, some uh, faucets. Yeah. Uh, when we go into our bathrooms, the uh, the light fixtures above the sinks. Uh, those kinds of things, uh, that really makes a huge difference. And at a fairly low cost. Yeah. Too. Uh, I think people think that it's 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 super, super crazy, but it really isn't. And when we go into homes that were uh, built in the 80s, 90s, uh, sometimes even in the early 2000s that still have that, that gold hardware, uh, it really does stand out. It does. And if, if we're able to replace that with a brushed nickel, uh, it really modernizes the home in a in a significant way, and uh, makes your home look uh, way different, and uh, without a significant cost. Exactly, and I think that goes hand in hand with a theme of uh, being somewhat neutral. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, you're you're moving into your home; you want to make it yours. Yeah. Uh, but when you're going to sell it, you want to appeal to the largest number of potential yes. buyers. And how do you do that? You do that by keeping it fairly neutral and on the hardware or if it's paint or something along those lines. You wanna you wanna keep it appealing to everybody. Yep. And so yeah, we're just we're just making those uh those changes. And again, eBay is a great place to find that stuff. But you know, when we're talking about uh, switches and plate covers, just going down to Home Depot and Lowe's, uh, you know, yeah. a you know, a couple bucks here and there, it, it, you can you can yeah. change out the entire house for right for, for under cheap. ten dollars yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and just make sure that all of the plate covers are the same color, whether it's ivory or white or whatever you decide on. Yep, 
Exactly. All right. The, the number four, uh, the other place that uh, people tend to go look at when they walk into a house, but it's not a place that people tend to gather. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> would be the Outside primary, of the owners. Yeah. <laughs> would be the primary bath. Correct. Uh, and, and there's a couple things that we can do. One of the things that we mentioned already is just uh, some of the fixtures. Correct. Uh, when we look at the, the sink area, uh, a lot of times when the builders come in, they just put up a mirror. Right. And one of the things that we can do that just really spices it up is just put a frame around that mirror. Correct. And if the mirror is deteriorated, it's often deteriorated around the edges. And it's not real a, a real big deal. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of where it chips and stuff like that. We can just put a frame around it and makes it look really, really nice. And again, change that uh, lighting up at yep. the top, make it a little bit more modern. Usually when the builders put it in, they're just putting in the very basic, basic, basic. Uh, we can put, it, put in something that appeals to us, maybe looks a little bit better, change out the hardware on the sink, the, the, the spouts and, mm -hmm. and things like that, the yeah. handles. Yeah. And um, one of the things that often happens on uh, older homes on resale and sometimes uh, um, when the builders are putting things in and uh, you know we the the original owner didn't use any of the upgrades we will have a shower tub exactly now well a couple things I think that happen with that is uh, some people like shower tubs mm -hmm. and want a tub and they're okay with that some people would just rather have a shower a walk-in shower so but if you do have a shower tub, um, you may want to consider, depending on the age of the home, how long you've been in the home, is refinishing that. Mm -hmm. It's hiring somebody to refinish that for you. It's a fairly... Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. Exactly. Yeah. You can get that done for, you know, two, three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's not, it's not crazy. Now, when we talk about homeowners that, that really like the shower tub, I have found that one per home is is good yes uh and so having it in the secondary bath is generally good though you know there's generally somebody in the home that does like to take baths mm -hmm. uh, and they do like to be able to give their kids baths but uh to be able to have a shower that they can step into without having to step up over right is appealing and when we're going for resale uh that's one of the things that really stands out as a nice luxurious shower and so if you're looking for a way to increase the value of your home and you want to do it for your not just it's not something that you need to go do. Right. But if you're looking for something that that appeals to you and yeah. having a luxurious shower appeals to you, making that change, uh, it, it will pay off in the end. It, it, it could be a return on your investment. Um, I'm not saying that it that you will see a value that is higher mm -hmm. than what you spent on it. You want to make sure that you're doing it because you want the shower. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that if you spend five thousand, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars on a new shower, that you're going to see more than that in the value of your home. Right. But uh, you know, if you're doing it for you, you should also see an increase in the value. I would agree um, because yeah. the buyers will be attracted to that. Um, and, I think, yeah, I think to your point the the industry average on, on a project like that is going to be, you know, you're going to see maybe 50, anywhere from 50 to 70% return yeah. on that, yeah. um, on, a, on big projects like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so just something else to keep in mind. Yeah. Stick around and we'll talk about a couple, uh, DIY projects that, uh, you could do for incredibly cheap. Hey everyone, this is Kenny Klaus with Klaus Team Real Estate Solutions. We know there's a lot of confusion in today's market, whether it's billboards, TV, radio, you know, mail, everyone's trying to get your attention. They offer one lane, where at the Klaus Team, we have over 20 different programs. We can help you navigate through to find out what's best for you. And remember, we work for you, they work for themselves. We're here to represent you and make sure you have the best experience possible. Visit us at klausteam.com slash call us first. All right, Nat. So a couple DIY things that we can do, one of which uh, is uh, something that a lot of people can do themselves, but some people hire somebody to do, is just paint. Right. I think the biggest thing um, you want to do with that, and I kind of mentioned it before, is be neutral yeah. on, your, on your colors. Again, if you're moving into a home, make it your own. But when you're getting ready to sell your home, um, 
if somebody's coming into your house and they're walking into a different color in each room, it makes it a little difficult for them to imagine themselves in your space. Yeah, I uh, my first home, it was the first home I owned. Uh, I grew up in a home where all the walls were white. They still are. My parents' homes, mm -hmm. all the walls are white. Uh, and then I rented. And then uh, I got a home that was all my own. And I had just moved to Arizona. I got excited about being in the Southwest. And so um, my living room was loud. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then it, it came time to sell. And my my realtor wisely said, you know what, let's... Um, Let's maybe tone it down a little bit to uh, right. to list the property, and so yeah, we went from the the very loud southwest colors to to more of a just the the neutral tans. Right. Yeah, and I think you know there was there was a time in the last seven to nine years where gray seemed to kind of take over. I'm seeing a little bit less of that now. You still see it, mm -hmm. but. Um, the color is agreeable gray, which you still see a lot. Um, and it's perfect, really, uh, to hit that kind of neutral sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, just just painting. And one of the things that we can do when we paint is also pay attention to uh, those baseboards. And uh, an, uh, one way that we can update the home is just by updating the baseboards. Right. And if, if we've got those little, uh, you know, uh, three quarter or one inch baseboards, uh, we can we can swap those out and go with a, a, a longer, uh, uh, lengthier baseboard. Right. Uh, that will really make the house look much more contemporary, much, much newer. Absolutely. Uh, because the, the shorter baseboards, they've been around for, for years. They look mm -hmm. fine. Uh, but just having a taller baseboard is going to make the house look more luxurious. It's going to make it look much newer. Exactly. And uh, if we're already painting, uh, especially if we're also putting in new carpet or new mm -hmm. flooring, just get rid of those baseboards and put in perfect time to do taller it. baseboards. Yep, perfect time to do it. It's going to make a huge difference. Yep. Now, we already talked about a little bit when we were talking about the kitchen, but let's go in a little bit more detail. Let's talk about lighting uniformity. Yeah. Um, there's, and this happens quite often, um, where you walk in to a house and, uh, you may have lower level entry lighting or higher level entry lighting, and it might be a particular, uh, shade or degree of white. And then you walk into another room and you encounter a different white and you walk into another room, um, all within the entryway mm -hmm. visually. And it, People don't necessarily see it immediately, but they feel it. And you want all of those rooms to not necessarily be at the same wattage, but the same type of white. Yeah, yeah, the same same tone, the same warmth. Um, the house that I currently have, uh, when I bought it, uh, the kitchen and the hallways were different warmths. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, you know, then I went and bought some lights and started swapping out because it's all cans. Right. And so it's it's floodlights in the cans. And yeah. I, I bought new ones and swapped it out. And obviously, nope, <laughs> uh, those are not the same warmth. And so I had to just, I just went and swapped out every single uh, floodlight can in the entire house. Right. And just made them all the same. Right. And uh, Because yeah. it drove me nuts. Right. It, it just, especially when I went in the kitchen and, you know, it looked like almost a rainbow. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And when you're walking through, and especially if you've done that painting that we just talked yeah. about, you're walking through and the paint in each room, you painted the same shade or the sh same color, but it'll look different. Yeah, it'll, it'll look like you have an accent wall when you don't. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the last thing is energy efficiency. Yes. So there's a lot of things we can do with energy efficiency in Arizona. Uh, the great thing would be uh, just uh, screens. Yep, yep, and that's a, that's a DI. That's definitely a DIY thing in terms of roll down screens mm -hmm. off your back patio. Depending on how your home is situated, if you're east west facing, um, and you're western facing on your backyard, you probably are going to be doing that, and that's yeah. a, that's definitely a DIY project. Yeah, but uh, and then if you if you want, you can get sunscreens. Yep. 
Um, not necessarily a DIY project, nope. but uh, something to look at. Sunscreens do make a huge uh, difference in your power bills, yep. in the warmth of the rooms that are on the, the south facing and, and, uh, and west facing walls. Uh, I highly recommend them, yeah. especially if you're, you're feeling warmth in those rooms. Right, exactly. I think another thing to go along with that is to have uh, smart thermostats. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a friend of mine who lives up uh, in the Greyhawk area, and he actually got a screaming deal from SRP to come in and they installed new, he, had two, he has two units at his house, mm -hmm. installed two thermostats, uh, smart thermostats for $30 a piece. And when he looked those same thermostats up online, they were like 150 oh, yeah. a pop. So Yeah, and, and you can also find uh, rebates from cities too. Absolutely. On those because everybody's trying to uh, help reduce those those costs. And I can tell you on the smart thermostats, it, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, some of them will learn your habits. Uh, but even some of them, it, it's just nice to be able to look and, you know, if, if my kids are home from school, I can look and see, are they dropping it too far before I get home? I can, I can move it back up to where it needs to be. Right. Um, you know, if I'm going uh, visiting family in California and let's say I brought the dog with me and so no one's in the house, I can move it up to 81, 82 degrees and then as I hit the border coming back, I can you then drop, drop it, it back, back down. down. Yep. Uh, I don't want to move it up too high because it's going to stress the unit uh, to cool it back down. It's you know, it, it, it's actually going to be worse and right. cause uh, you know much more energy to cool the house down from being too high. But it really doesn't need to be as low as it is for people to be in there. But then I could drop it back down so the house is nice uh, when we get back to it. Yeah, I think the swing... I think uh, most air conditioning experts would tell you don't do a swing of more than four to yeah. five degrees on something like that. But yeah, you're hundred percent correct. Yeah. We usually sit about 76 to 78, depending on how, how cheap dad is. <laughs> <laughs> how cheap is that? Well, uh, Coyman, it's a Dutch name. <laughs> well, thank you so much. If uh, you want to do any of these kind of projects, uh, just reach out to us. We do have recommended vendors that we've worked with a lot in the past that uh, our clients have worked with. Uh, and we'd love to pass on any of those. Uh, you know, we don't guarantee anything because, uh, you know, we aren't them, but uh, we are uh, happy to pass on any referrals of people that we've had great experiences with. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. We'll love to have you back on the podcast. Again. I would like that a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.